Hello everyone and welcome back on Haruki Murakami Art. Before you will witness the first episode of my upcoming Murakami video podcast, I would like to talk to you about a film that I have discovered recently. I've just stumbled over it by accident and you maybe already know it because it's from 2008. And in my opinion, this one is a Murakami motion picture and maybe the ultimate Murakami motion picture that has not been written by Murakami. I am talking about Tokyo. So Tokyo has been shot in 2008 and is an anthology film, which means that it consists of three different short stories by three different directors. And these directors are Michel Gondry, the mastermind behind Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind and The Science of Sleep. Then we have Leos Carax, who is considered to be a very shy director. And then we have Bong Joon-ho, the mastermind behind Parasite and Snowpiercer. I need to talk to you about this film because this one is something that could be straight out of Murakami's pencil. Just like a short story collection like The Elephant Vanishes or First Person Singular. And also Blind Willow Sleeping Woman. So why do I think that Tokyo is a film that could be straight from Murakami? It's obvious because it has a very special narration style which I will dive into later. And it also features magical realism and is set in Tokyo, so something that you can find in every Murakami cocktail. Not in every, but in most of his cocktails. And this is a cocktail that we all love to drink. So, in case you don't know Tokyo, I wish you a lot of fun with this video. In case you have already watched it, please leave me your comment and let me know what you think about this film. I really liked it. Some critics do not like it, but I really enjoyed it while watching it. And... Let's enjoy the upcoming few minutes. Have fun. So, as I have told you, Tokyo consists of three short stories. And I will introduce each story with a short summary. I'm not spoiling anything, but I would like to open some interest for this film because it is quite underrated and I want you to watch it, especially as a Harukist. You need to watch this. So, the first story is interior design and this one is directed by Michel Gondry. You already know Michel Gondry, especially if you have watched my 10 movies that you should watch if you love Murakami videos, because he's the one who has directed Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind and also The Science of Sleep. In interior design we can follow the story of a young couple who is moving from the province to Tokyo and because they have some financial problems and are struggling to find a job they find shelter at a close friend of them. Akira who is a young aspiring filmmaker tries to show his feature film on the big screen and his girlfriend is struggling to find a job at the same time. And while Akira is obviously having fun in Tokyo, his girlfriend Hiroko seems to not enjoy it. She is sad, she can't find friends and she starts imagining things. And this ultimately leads into a very strange happening that most sadokists won't find strange. Hiroko is turning into a chair. And the images in the scenery are very Murakami-like because the setting remains very basic. It is still in Tokyo, so it's not the surroundings that turn into something, it's only the person, the single person that turns into this special furniture. And it also shows her following life as a chair and how she is imagining how things might turn out if she still remains the same person she is. But it also shows how different persons can cope with a new situation. So the one who is taking it very positively and the other one who is struggling to do something with the situation and seeks refuge in a fantasy world. So. This is something that is very present in a lot of Murakami's novels. And I think you should have a smile while I'm telling you this, because this is something we all love and admire. So the second story is called Merde, and Merde is basically the French word for sh**. This story is directed by Leos Carax. So if you don't know Leos Carax, he is a French director and Leos Carax is not his real name. His real name is Alex Christophe Dupont. And this professional name is an anagram of his real name. So he also has the name Oscar in his full name. And 
so he made an anagram and if you combine all these letters you will have the name Leos Carax which is quite shorter than Alex Christophe Dupont. Leos Carax is a very cool independent filmmaker who has some feature films that you should definitely watch like Holy Motors or Annette. Annette has been released in 2021 and is maybe his most mainstream film because it features Adam Driver and Marion Cotillard and is a musical filled drama feature film. I haven't watched it yet, I don't know, if you have already watched it please let me know in the comments what you think of this film because it is on my list since I don't know how many months. But for now let's talk about Merde. So the scenery opens up in Tokyo as the other story as well and it shows how a strange creature who has a humane face climbs up from the Tokyo underground. So he rises from the underground lair and starts to attack people. So without giving a shit, he walks through the street of Tokyo and starts stealing cash and cigarette from passersby. He sexually assaults schoolgirls and is shown in media and he's causing a hysteria just like Godzilla did. And one day Merde is totally freaking out. So he finds a cave with a lot of hand grenades in his underground lair and starts to collect them, comes back to Tokyo and starts attacking people in a horrific scene. So this scene is breathtakingly shot. I really love to watch it. But of course the things that happen on screen are horrible. So he just starts to throw these grenades onto innocent people and he kills people. And this is shot in one take only and the atmosphere that is caused here is something threatening, but also a masterful camera work. So Merde gets imprisoned, of course, and he speaks a language that no one else understands. So it is a language that the director has created for this film only. And then we have a switch to France, where an attorney claims that he is one of very few persons who can speak this language and he offers himself as a translator so he flies to Japan, he flies to Tokyo and while Merde is facing his trial he is the translator of it and a lot of these scenes are not subtitled some of them have a Japanese translator and of course in the English or German dub you can understand what they are talking about but the language that they speak is something that makes this creature unhuman while he is still human. So he faces his trial, goes to prison and is waiting for his sentence until justice takes a very unexpected turn. So at this point this is pretty much it that you should know about Merde. When you read the critics online most of the people claim Merde as the weakest of the stories, but in my opinion this one is very fascinating because it plays with mass hysteria, it plays with society and also it has a message that everyone should listen to. So you should find out for yourself how you like this story. It is very uncommon, it is creative in so many ways and it is something that is following me since a few days. I can't stop thinking about it, but as said, Please watch this and let me know what you think. And in case you have watched this, please also let me know. I would love to discuss with you about it. Which leads to the third story of this film, Shaking Tokyo. And this one is directed by Bong Joon-ho. So I think most of us know Bong Joon-ho. He is one of the best South Korean directors. He has given us films like Memories of Murder, Host, Snowpiercer and of course the masterful comedy thriller Parasite which is one of my most favorite films from the past years. In Shaking Tokyo we follow the story of a so-called hikikomori. Hikikomoris are something very common in Japan. So hikikomoris are total withdrawals from society. They are seeking extreme degrees of social isolation and they are considered to be like hermits that don't leave their home. And the number of so-called existing hikikomoris is very high. In my opinion, it's shockingly high because estimates suggest that half a million Japanese youth have been become social recluses. And on top of that, we have more than half a million middle-aged individuals that are so-called hikikomoris. So the story Shaking Tokyo is narrated by a first-person narrator who is played by Teruyuki Kagawa and he has not left his apartment in a decade. He only uses his telephone to communicate with the outer world and he uses delivery services to eat. And when you see his apartment, you can see that hundreds of pizza cartons are stacked throughout this whole room. He avoids eye contact. So every time 
the delivery driver is bringing him his pizza. He is not looking at them. Until one day, one girl enters his apartment to deliver his pizza and he can't resist looking at her. And on this particular day, an earthquake strikes Tokyo and the delivery girl starts to faint and just falls down in his apartment and he falls in love with her. Through the following days, this Hikikomori can't stop thinking about her until he finally decides to step out of the door. Because the next time he orders pizza, the girl is not there. It's another colleague, it's a male and he has desperately fallen in love with her and can't stop thinking about her. And while he is walking through the streets of Tokyo, we have a scenery that could be straight out of Murakami's book. So the people are acting quite strange and the houses are covered by leaves. It's like the world has stopped to live and you have some kind of walking dead mood just like in zombie times and the people act strange and he finally finds the girl who has become a hikikomori herself. But again, I will stop here. I'm not spoiling anything. I want you to watch this film as fast as you can because it is a masterpiece on its own. And even if three different directors have shot these stories here, all are somehow harmonizing together and they just let you dive into this world that they have created. So yeah, it is a love letter to Tokyo, but it's also a love letter to dreamy worlds. But it also shows how people seek refuge in a different world and start imagining things. And this is a subject I have covered in my videos a lot of times. But besides of these little masterpieces that the directors have created for us, the actors just simply kill it. They kill it in every scene. Let it be Teruyuki as the Hikikomori or Denis Lavant as Mr. Merde or Ayako Fujitani as Hiroko. Every actor does a great job in this film. The camera movements are very close, they are very intimate, the settings are very realistic and the storylines are just perfect for this short amount of time. But still, even if these are short stories, it feels like you are watching three different feature films and they take the time they need to tell this short story, but it doesn't feel like a short story. For example, Mert. I'm thinking of Mert since several days. And it feels like I have watched a 90 minute feature film. But the same stands for interior design and the same stands for Shaking Tokyo. So, alright everyone, I hope I didn't tell you something lukewarm here. I hope that you could enjoy the video. In case you haven't watched Tokyo, please let me know in the comments. And let's talk about it. Let's discuss it in a live stream soon um, when we are covering different films that could be inspired by Murakami. Until then, I am wishing you a very pleasant pre-Christmas time. Enjoy the time with your family, stay healthy and don't miss the premiere of my first video podcast. It's coming soon, only a few days left. So my dear friends, never stop reading, stay healthy and see you soon on Haruki Murakami Art. Bye.